What's up guys, welcome back to another brand new video today, a very special one. Today, we're looking at the InMotion V12. All right guys, before we go too far, we have to do a massive shout out to the sponsor of today's video, and that's E-Riders in Queensland. These are the guys who hooked me up with the V12, and these are the guys that I'll be picking up my personal V12 from next week. These guys specialize in EUCs and everything about them. So protection wear, helmets, they've got the full range of our lazy rolling gear so you can go in and try it on. They've got all the big brands of helmets, padding, uh, these knee pads, these nice dual axle hard shell knee pads. These guys have it all and they have almost every wheel in stock. They also hold learn to ride days, weekly or monthly. I'll put the link in the description. They're just all about the EUC community. So a massive shout out to E-Riders. They've got these coming in in about two and a half weeks. And they've also given me a $50 discount code. So Scott D, my usual discount code, will give you 50 bucks off any wheel they sell, including the V12. Let's really quickly talk about the, the top end, the spec. It's InMotion's first 100 volt wheel. It's a 16 inch wheel by three inches wide, so it's gonna do really well in city riding, but also do quite well on off-road. It's a 2,500 watt motor that can max out up to 5,000 watts. And the big thing I'm really happy about is they've gone with a 17 50 watt hour battery, 1,750 watt hours. And all of that is combined into a 29 kilo machine. Last couple of points before we ride, it's got an upgraded stand, so slightly different from the V11. This one is a lot more stable. You can really rock this. Rock and, roll. and it's not gonna fall over easily. If you're on uneven ground, sure, it won't be as effective, but on flat ground, it does a really good job. Everything else we'll talk about on the ride. So let's get the helmet, let's get the pads, Let's hit the path before it rains. I'll tell you right now, it has been raining here all week and it's supposed to be raining in thunderstorms right now. All right guys, let's start the ride on the InMotion V12. We're gonna talk about it as we go along. As I mentioned, I've got a couple of small gripes with it, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but they are firmware fixable. So. Not a massive deal. As you would have heard at the very beginning, massive thank you again to E-Riders for providing the wheel for me for a week or so, just so I can really get out and try it. I have locked in my order and I will be going back and picking one up when they arrive in two weeks time. Why is this wheel special? Well, it's 100 volts for starters. It's a 16 inch tire, so it's very nimble. It's very easy to ride. It's got really nice power. They say a top speed of 70 kilometers per hour. I know some people have already gone faster than that. The built-in atmospheric lights are just beautiful. You can change how they, how they react. They can drop, they can spin, they can react to the music. But also out of the box, it is a very comfortable wheel to ride. Now these paths, as you can see, are just socking the paths today are just so wet and covered in crap so I can't go too crazy as I would hate to slip out and lose this thing into the river. Let me start off by telling you one of my favourite things about this wheel and it's where your feet go, the pedals. The pedals are height adjustable so you have three different heights so if you're going off road you can raise them up so you don't grab that rock and spin you out. If you're going all on street and you want speed and you want stability, you can lower them down to really lower your center of gravity. I'm currently on the middle tier. So right in the middle there, not too high, not too low. That's right. Now I do have sound dive on, so you can probably hear it because I am under pressure at the moment. And that's something we'll talk about very soon. Something else I really love about these pedals is that they are slightly angled. Let me show you what I mean. Slightly angled up, a couple of degrees angled upwards. So they hold you into the wheel. Now, if I compare that to my V8F, they are just as flat as the horizon. These feel so different. When I first hopped on, I was like, oh wow, I don't know if I like that. But as soon as I did a turn, I was like, oh wow, I like that. And the pedals on this thing have been so well thought out. One 
one of the things that I don't love about this current setup. And as I said, I'm sure this is firmware fixable and I'm sure they can address it. When you're at home and you're charging your wheel, so you've got it turned off, you plug it in to charge it, it activates the Bluetooth, which is really weird. So if you're at home, you're watching TV, and you've got your wheel on charge, your phone is connected to it. And so anytime you play something or you get a message, through the wheel, the noise comes. It's peculiar. Okay guys, now let's talk about Soundwave and also the Bluetooth speakers on this thing. Now the Soundwave is an awesome idea and I think when we first heard it, I mean I personally was like, that's awesome. A couple of things I don't like. It's not speed reactive, it's um, pressure reactive. So if you're going slow up a steep hill, it's blaring. But if you're cruising like right now, I can't even hear it, even though we're sitting on 28 kilometers per hour, there's nothing. I would actually prefer it was speed reactive and volume controlled instead of being pressure controlled. Another thing which is really weird about it is its current settings, and again this is firmware fixable, I've got it set at 10% but if I set it to 1% it's actually louder which is really peculiar. So 10% seems to be the sweet spot. Now as far as the Bluetooth speakers they sound awesome, they've got really good sound, not much bass. But again, the bass would be lost when you're riding anyway. It's got really nice treble and it's actually got front and rear speakers. I've seen a lot of people comment on the front speakers, but very, people actually, very few people actually mention that it's front and rear speakers. So it really get a, an immersive sound when you're riding. And they sound pretty good. Now this is just coming through my lapel mic. But you can... It's, it's pretty loud, so when you're cruising at 40, you can definitely still hear the music. But that links to my next gripe. If you're riding with Soundwave on, let me open this up. If you're riding with Soundwave on, it overrides your Bluetooth music. So when you're going along with your music playing, you go, you take off and you've got a lot of pressure, your music will actually mute so it can play the Soundwave. Again, it's firmware fixable, so it's not a make or break deal at, by any means. I mean, I can just turn the sound wave off, I don't really care. But I need to tell you that if you have sound wave on, it affects your music volume. I'd love to know what wheel you guys have and if you don't have one what wheel are you thinking about getting tell me what you love most about it I'd love to know if you've got a wheel and you've told me what you love most about it tell me if you work for the company what's one thing you would change or fix comment down below what you love and what you would fix about your own wheel I'd love to know now something else that I think is firmware updatable is the brakes now the brakes are, in my opinion, a little bit soft. Now I could be spoiled because I'm coming from the V8S and I feel that thing has amazing stopping power. But when I first hopped on this, I was a little bit surprised. It felt a little, a little soft, a little um, undercooked. I'm starting to get used to it, but it still doesn't have that initial, oh wow, that's a good stop. It'll still stop you, obviously. Let me show you really quickly. Okay, so we're sitting on about 25 kilometers per hour and you really got to lean back into it to get that stop going. Now you can just stop, not a problem, but if you need to really stop, you have to really lean back and really use that gyro to get that stopping power. I think a firmware upgrade would solve this in a heartbeat. Don't forget, guys.
guys to click the link in the description if you're in Australia and you want to get one of these and use the code SCOTTD for an additional $50 off the price. Something else really special about e-riders is they actually check every wheel. So they don't just get the, the shipment in and then slap labels on them and send them out. They open up every box, they make sure the tire is inflated correctly, they make sure the correct firmware is on there so you don't have to muck around trying to upgrade your firmware. They do a full safety check. I'm not sure what the number is, I think it's like a 68 or 100 point safety check on every single wheel before they ship it out to you. Now this is the part that really blows me away. Coming from Eastgate, now I know DIYs will fly up here, not a problem, but look at this hill behind me. And we're going up at 20 kilometers per hour. And I can lean more, I'm not getting any warnings or anything. Look at that, straight up there. That is a steep little hill. The guys in Brisbane will know that hill very well. Someone had a cut out on that uh, and fell off. But going down is also just as, as easy. Like, brakes are amazing. I obviously don't have a full battery. I wouldn't come down here on 100%. But I'm very confident in the stopping ability of this wheel. Again, because of that 16 inch circumference or diameter, whatever one it is. I'm, I always get that wrong. Diameter, halfway, circumference, four round. The square root of 36, Bart Simpson. So this is just holding me perfectly. I can come to a complete stop if I wanted to on the steepest part of the hill. Look at that. It's such a safe wheel. It really is. I, I keep talking about that. And in motion is famous for safety. And this is no, there is no exception to this. This is still an extremely safe wheel. 100 volt, yes. 70 kilometers per hour, yes. Massive range, yes. Safety, yes. Alright guys, it's time to wrap up the V12 video. It's just starting to rain, so perfect timing. It's been an absolute blast riding this thing today around Brisbane. Whew. As we always do, we're gonna talk about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats on this wheel. Don't enter the glasses. Oh, it's really starting to rain. So really quickly, the strengths, obviously, excuse me, hot. The strengths, Obviously, 100 volt battery, 2,500 watt motor, 1750 uh, amp hour battery, adjustable pedals, um, the pedal angle, how they're not flat, they really hold you into the wheel without you having to really uh, hang on for dear life. The handle I really like, the usable screen, uh, firmware upgrade will slightly fix that, uh, which I'll talk about in the opportunities. The wheel itself being 16 inch by 3 inches is amazing for city commuting but also amazing on light off road. Like I would happily take this along a trail path, grass, loose shingle, that sort of thing. The stand, the way they've upgraded the stand and made it so much more stable than the V11. Now let's move on to weaknesses. Um, there really is none. I mean, for the price, 3,299 AUD, I think it is. Less my $50 discount, Scott D at E-Riders. There are really no weaknesses. It goes so well. We've got 82% battery left after a huge ride of going fast and slowing down and going up and down hills and so on. We're going to do a whole separate video on range. And in that video, we'll also do a top speed test. I'll get fully padded up with my jacket and everything. Today, we didn't want to do that. Today, we reached, I think, 40... What was my top speed? 45 kilometers per hour was my top speed today. The heads up display just told me that, which is awesome. Now let's move on to opportunities. We've spoken about these throughout the ride, but let's just list them really quickly. A sound wave, I don't like that it's pressure sensitive. It should be speed sensitive, that's just me. If you disagree, comment down below. I don't like the fact that the sound wave overrides the music. It should either be just together, you know, or not at all. 
I hate that you're going along, you get your music playing, and then you accelerate, and your music volume drops just so the sound wave can increase. Seems really weird. And the last opportunity, the one that bugs me the most, is that when your wheel's plugged in and turned off, and it's charging at home, your Bluetooth on your phone will still connect, which is odd. So you gotta turn your Bluetooth off on your phone, otherwise every time you open up TikTok or Instagram stories, it starts blaring through the wheel, which is just odd. And I'm sure that's just an oversight, and I'm sure they'll fix it. And lastly, as we always talk about, is threats. Well, it's an EUC. It's one big threat if you don't respect it. Take your time, learn the wheel, learn how the braking works, learn the acceleration curve, listen to the warnings. Um, these guys do this amazing watch you can wear. They've got the official in motion one, but they've also got a off brand one. It's like 50 bucks. You can wear it and it connects to your wheel. So you get your heptic feedbacks on your warnings. You can see your speed, your battery, everything. Well, guys, I'm getting really wet. So let's end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, say skate safe, wheel safe, EUC safe. Whatever it is you do, do it safely, wear a helmet, and we'll see you on the next video.